There are seven specific truths about a man that will greatly determine your chances of being happy with him. But unfortunately, most women fail to recognize them. It's so easy to get swept away by your feelings towards a guy that you fail to recognize key distinctions that can make or break your relationship. So today, I'm going to reveal seven answers you need to find out before deciding to commit to a guy for life. My purpose today is to give you distinctions that allow you to do two things. Number one, radically decrease your chances of ending up in a relationship that after heart, energy, and time, perhaps years of your life, ends up not working for you. The second thing is to allow you to have a keener eye as to who to look for that can create a fulfilling partnership that lasts a lifetime with you. Two important distinctions are, number one, these are not the only seven things you need to watch out for or look out for, but these are things that I've seen time and time again that women miss out on and end up paying dearly when they don't get what they want. The second thing is, is it's not as simple as just asking seven questions and getting seven answers, but some of them will be worked out through conversation and some of these will need to be worked out through you investing time and energy with someone. But now that you know what to look for, it's going to be easier for you to understand what's really taking place. The first answer you need to know is his idea and his definition of what he is really looking for in a fulfilling relationship. In other words, his idea of a fulfilling relationship, what does it look like and where does it end up? And I'm saying this because there's guys who don't have any idea of what they want and are looking for a relationship, but then your chances of going to the right destination when he's not sure where he wants to go are going to be few and far between. There's going to be guys who kind of know what they want and may not have the ability to take you there. And there's going to be guys who have both the keen awareness of where they want to go, their definition, their vision for a relationship. And then they're also investing time and energy in the right places so they can take you there. Second thing you need to know that will make or break your relationship is how does he define infidelity? Listen, in this day and age, there's going to be multiple definitions roaming around. There's going to be people who think, well, infidelity obviously is having sex with somebody of the opposite sex or the same sex for that matter. That's not your partner. For some people, flirting is not infidelity. For some people, texting with old flames, even though there's nothing physical taking place, but that emotional connection with someone, they don't define it as infidelity. So in my book, that would be infidelity. But it's important for you to sit down with your partner and find out what you both the side is fair game and where you both draw the line as not being faithful to each other. The reason why I bring this up is because there's many people who don't have that discussion, don't have that agreement, and then they end up feeling frustrated or heartbroken at the highest level because infidelity can create that for a couple. The feeling of the floor being taken out from under you when they never took the time to understand that that was something that was not okay with them as a couple. Number three, how aware is he of the patriarchal world that we still live in. I'm defining this in the simplest terms of the disproportionate level of influence and power that still in this day and age, men have that women don't. Now, this is in no way to try to diminish the fact that things have gotten better for women. This is in no way trying to diminish that there's gonna be specific pains that men have that are incredibly challenging this day and age that some women don't get to experience, like the suicide rate, for example, for men. But what I'm talking about right now is the understanding that still right now, things are not for a game for men or women overall in the world and still in this country. So is he a guy who is a denier of this experience? He's a guy who's saying, no, just like people who say racism was <laughs> solved in the sixties when it's not the case. And as a man of color, I can attest in some small way that it's not the case. Other people have it much harder, right? Is he a guy who's going to say that doesn't exist or is he a guy who's going to say, no, it exists. So is he a denier? Is he a guy who acknowledges it? Or is he a guy who's on the forward spectrum of things where he's working, at least in his own environment, in his own home, to make things better for you? Not understanding that you have a different type of dynamic in the world will make it harder for you. Not having an agreement as to how things can be equal for both of you in the household will make it more challenging. Is he a guy who, despite being in this day and age is going to metaphorically have this experience of you being in the kitchen, making a sandwich. And I'm not talking about specifically you making him a sandwich, but the idea that you have less say in things that you're not, your voice doesn't count or that you're not as important in the decision-making process. If he's one of those guys, then 
you're probably going to suffer. And his degree of awareness and his degree of forward action in decreasing this discrepancy between men and women, at least in the household, will matter to you. Number four, what is his attachment style? And he might be aware of it. Ideally, if he's not aware of it, can you become aware of his attachment style? And by attachment style, I'm talking about the way he connects with other human beings in a very natural way, the way he connects with you, the way he creates emotional bonds with others. Is it going to be more of a avoidance style? Is it going to be anxious attachment style? Or is it going to be a place where he's more securely attached? The reason why this matters is because so many of the struggles you will have with him as a couple will refer back to this root issue, the way he connects with and the way his level of intimacy and the way he engages with you. If he, for example, is more of an avoidant type, he doesn't have that deep need for emotional connection. When you get too close to him, he needs his space, he needs to go away, and you're more of an anxious attachment style, that's a recipe for a highly challenging relationship. I'm not saying that things can't get better. I'm not saying that things can be worked on. But for you to work on those things, you both need to be aware of your proclivities and your natural stance and do something about it. If you don't work on those things and you have a discrepancy of this nature, one is actually attached and the other one is avoidant, that is the recipe for a very painful relationship for both of you. The more you get close, the more he runs away, the more he runs away, the more you want to get close. So it's a chasing situation that makes you feel incredibly anxious and makes him feel like running away the whole time. Now, before I go into my points five, six, and seven, which are really important to consider, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet that you're not fully aware of the root cause while you're still single. What I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every continent, every walk of life you can imagine, to attract their ideal life partners and put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. All you have to do if you want to participate and have your answer is go to the first link in the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions, and in 60 seconds, you'll have the answer to the question of why you're still single. And a custom report is going to share with you, based on your specific blind spot, what's the number one thing you can do to reverse the trend you're on and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. The fifth answer you need to find out is how open and hungry is he for personal growth? Listen, there's so many different types of guys. Some guys are going to be very forward thinking in their personal growth. They're going to be into it, aware of it, and working on themselves. There's going to be guys who are open to it, even though they may not be working on it right now, but they'll actually get on the ball wagon of making their lives better, understanding psychology, understanding human nature, uh, being hungry for improving themselves, biochemistry, all the things that really affect a human life and start working on them. There's going to be guys who are closed off to it. The more on the closed off side and lack of hunger for emotional growth and for spiritual growth, and for personal growth, the more of a shit show you stand to stand yourself in. He could be a really cool guy if he doesn't work on himself. That's one of those very classic situations when one of the persons in the couple starts growing and evolving and the other person stays behind. Number six, how does he handle conflict? Now, I heard from someone recently who's sure that she never had an argument with her guy and it's been like a couple of years. And my thought is, well, hold on to your hat when it happens because it might be a really unpleasant surprise. Not that you should be having arguments all the time, but if you don't understand how he handles stress and challenging and even shitty situations in life, then you're in for a ride. You need to understand when something challenging happens, does he head on acknowledge it? Does he avoid it for a while? Does he deflect it? How does he handle conflict? Because here's the thing, how he handles conflict will allow you to predict how he'll handle conflict with you and how you'll both tackle together a myriad of situations that you will face both as a couple just as a matter of being two human beings living in the same household and also with the world outside of you. The last one that you need to understand, and again, I can't overemphasize how simple this seems, but how many people miss out on this, is what are his needs for emotional closeness and for physical closeness? Some people have a high need for physical closeness, very little need for emotional closeness. Some people have a high need for emotional closeness, no physical closeness. You need to make sure that the person is not identical to you, because I don't think you'll find an identical person to you. You need to find out that there's a person that's not so far out from what your needs are that you end up feeling unseen, unheard, unmet, unfelt, and unacknowledged. There's people who are incredible partners and they have a lot of chemistry, but they have a very strong discrepancy either in emotional connection or on physical connection, and that alone can break the relationship. So hope you find this helpful and useful. If you do, it would mean the world to me add to my channel because this is how I can help more women understand men. If you can click like and subscribe, 
to my channel. And if you'd like to continue understanding how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.